Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari homebrew. And we have a very special show tonight. Not only do we have the secret world premiere, not so secret, world premiere of the secret <laughs> new homebrew nice. by Muddy Funster. Mm -hmm. Not only that, we have Muddy Funster in studio. Well, not studio, via video. Um, <laughs> So we're very excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's the uh, Atari 7800 game, brand new homebrew, very exciting. And we'll also be doing an After Dark after this, competing in the 2600 High Score Showdown Season 5 mm -hmm. with Crazy Balloon. So we'll see how we do. Uh, usually not top 10. <laughs> 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 because there's some really good players out there. But we put in our best score. Um, I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers who help support the show. Alan the Fur, Arena Foot, Arm Scar Coder, Atari 800 XL Rules, Atari H, Buck Owens, Caffeine Man 2D, Charles Whelan, Chive 5, Dianoid, Dan, NBC, Drexel, Dr. Mook House, Great Offender, Gretams, Ground Trooper, Roger Rapper, Don DWC, Juan Urado, Carl G. Kev Kelly, Mark Space Inc., Metal Atari, Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Mike Littell, Miss Command, Mr. Zarno, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster. Muddy Funster. Uh, Nathan Strom, Neo Media, Pack Rat, VG Quag, RC70, Rendered Ghost, Repentless, VG Retro Salary Man, Ricardo Pimp, Smitty B, Socrates, Spicer, S. Ramirez, The D Train, The Lost, Cartridge, Welshman, 89, T Dan, K, T Foes, Trek MD, VG ZC, X Ken X70, and Zebchi. And if you want to support the show, you can hit subscribe. It's free with Amazon Prime. You just link them up. Or you can just follow us so you know when we're on live. Um, yeah, we're just going to skip any mail or news or polls because it's an exciting show <laughs> and we don't want to make them wait any longer um so please let me just get this queued up actually there we go um so please welcome to zero page homebrew the developer behind such incredible games as tire tracks and daredevil and EXO and Danger Zone, and he's also the eight-time nominee in the Atari Homebrew Awards. Uh, the incredibly talented Lewis Hill, aka Hello. Muddy Funster, please welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. <laughs> oh, can't hear you. One second. One second. Oh. Uh oh. Nope. The volume is there. <laughs> <laughs> Is so uh, the upper one? Try now. Check, check, check. Nope. No. Uh-oh. Why? Why? You know, everything goes so well in rehearsal. <laughs> oh, it might be the actual laptop. No, that's no. volume is up. Not muted. Well, at least everyone could see him. Uh, do you know sign language? <laughs> I'm going to unplug you <laughs> and then plug you back in. Let's see if that changes anything. Oh, I think I might know. I'm just gonna take you off the screen for a second um, because maybe the default. <laughs> Carl G says, now for the blame the cat segment of this show. The <laughs> it's these two, these two right here. audio has been changed to not what I want, mm. right? It might, might not be going out over the output. Uh, no. Girl, gee, okay. blame the cats. Well, blame it the says cats. it's good now. So let's try that again. Yes. Damn, technology is correct. We like to say the cats fluff it up. Yeah, the cats yes. are always fluffing up. The Wi-Fi and the sound. <laughs> so let's give it another All right. go. Uh, oh, I sit there. Okay. Can we hear you now? Hello. Yes, Yay. we can. Well, that's much better. I'm, I'm sure most people do want to hear you as well as see you. <laughs> so welcome to the show, Lewis. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you, James. Thanks for having me on. No problem. And uh, where in the world are you? Because this is you're in a very different time zone than us, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's just um, just after 1 a.m. here, Saturday morning. So I'm in the UK. Um, I'm a... Probably about 20 miles from Birmingham, so right in the middle. Okay, so you stayed up quite late, but, you know, it's the weekend. You can, you know, <laughs> cut a little slack here and there, so that's good. Absolutely. So, uh, 
Glad you can join us. Mm -hmm. um, we've played many of your games over the years, so I'm really excited to debut this one on the show, uh, and especially making it a secret one. That's always fun for the audience to to guess what it possibly could be. And I actually wrote down all the guesses <laughs> that people I, have I made. I don't think there was one that was right. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not one person got it right, which is unfortunate. I was going to... I was hoping somebody would guess it. They got really close. There was a couple of like, close ones, yeah, to be fair. But not, none of yeah, them hit the nail. Really close. Yeah. Um, so Trebor pretty much nailed the hints I gave at what it could be. So he nailed, uh, narrowed it down quite close. He, he got, um, when I said uh, missing entry in the Atari 7800 library, mm -hmm. it said it implies to me that it exists both on the 2600 and 5200 already, mm -hmm. which is correct. So he got that right. And uh, on, and I said port uh, that is beloved by almost everyone and has played on other systems. Like I would think most Atari 2600 aficionados would have played this game mm. for sure. Yeah. Um, and he said, implies to me an arcade title, which is not correct. <laughs> it is not an arcade title. Mm -hmm. um, and include systems like ColecoVision and Computer, so probably perhaps an Atari soft title, which is not correct. Um, uh, eliminating what is already released, what's left, and not shown in public work in progress, we're down to Moon Patrol and Jungle Hunt. Not correct. <laughs> um, I, as I'm typing the above, thinking Zach's song could fit the bell, no. Uh, uh, maybe it's a non-arcade port. River Raid, Pitfall 2, Hero, perhaps, getting closer. Okay. Um, so some other guesses. Uh, Carl G guessed <laughs> Lemmings. S. Ramirez guessed uh, Gyrus. Oh, that'd be amazing. Uh, I can't wait for Gyrus with all the all the voices mm. with the with the uh, dragonfly card. Uh, cr uh, Crossbow guessed Moon Patrol or Crystal Castles. Eagle guessed Contra. Uh, Jaden guessed a ton. Uh, 1942 Atlantis. Beam Rider. Demon Attack. Gorf. Gyrus. Hero. Jumpman, Jungle Hunt, Kaboom, Load Runner, Mine 2049er, Montezuma's Revenge, Moon Patrol, Mr. Do, Paperboy, Pitfall, Pitfall 2, River Raid, Spy Hunter, Star Wars, Tapper, and Zaxxon. I think he just posted his most wanted list. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then from Facebook, Marcus McLean Foster said Pitfall 2, and Sean Bossman said Rescue and Fractalis, Popeye, Star Wars, the arcade game, Missile Command, Space Invaders, Gauntlet, and Pong. Gauntlet would be a fun one. Mm. Actually, Gauntlet would be good on the Atari 5200 because it's got four ports. Mm -hmm. Or you could use the Quad Tari for the 7800. That would be good too. Uh, but they're all incorrect. Every single one of them. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so that kind of makes it more fun. Uh, oh, Lemmings too. There we go. Uh, so shall we get on with it? Yes. And yes. reveal the game and then... We'll start asking uh, you questions yep. about it. And as S. Ramirez says, show it, show it, show it. Show it, show it, show it. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Dan says, I hear a bit of a UK accent. Just just a slight bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's get this going. I did warm up my 7800, as, uh, as suggested <laughs> by uh, Lewis. Okay. Let's switch it over. Let me just check something first. Yep. Oh. Okay. We are ready. Okay. <clears throat> Drum roll. Can, oh. Oh, we can't see it. We can't see it. That doesn't help. That doesn't help <laughs> if we can see it. Okay, everybody ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. It's Atari. Ah, you have it. We used it. Pokey detected and used. Save key detected and used. Nice. Excellent. So I did plug in the save key. Good. Okay, press a button. A muddy vision. Mm. Muddy vision reproduction. Nice. Uh, you just can click on those links, Facebook, yeah, links. Instagram. <laughs> it's, it's got internet support, that's right? That's right. Yeah. That, that <laughs> wow, that's quite, quite impressive. Yeah, yeah very impressive. <laughs> um, uh, press the button. Here we go. It's Keystone Capers. 
which is found on 2600 and 5200. Nice. There we go. So, what, let's see, oh, so we all love all, almost all, every single Activision game. We played tons and tons of those mm -hmm. um, back in the 80s, and they dominated on the 2600. So what drew you specifically to Keystone Capers? Why, why Keystone Capers? Uh, for me, it's one of my favorite games ever, irrespective of platform. Really? Yeah. Um, I, I was playing some old 2600 games um, when this idea struck. Um, I was playing Missile Commands, Smurfs. Yes, Smurfs is one of my favorite 2600 Smurfs. games, it's embarrassingly. Game. <laughs> um, and I played some game. Keystone Capers. And it was one of those where um, you're playing along and then it's a bit late and you start thinking, how, how, would I, how would I do this on the 7800? And the thought line just started to drift away from playing the actual game to figuring stuff out. How would I do this? How would I do that? Um, right. I left it alone, went to bed, got up the next morning and then started work on a bit of a stress demo, proof of concept, which I told myself I would not do because I have, an, <laughs> I have a pile of other projects already on the burner. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. But it, it just snowballed from there. I mean, it's one of my favorite games for the for the 2600. It was one of the few games I had when I was a, a youngster. I used to play with my mum oh. a lot, and she'd be there with the joystick, and when the guy used to jump, she'd be there physically jumping with him. And it, it's, it was <laughs> Yep, that happens. It, it helps you get higher, right? yeah. just a little bit yeah. higher. Yep. Um, but it's yeah, it's just one of my favourite games, and I just thought, you know what, this is um, this is a game I think the seventy eight hundred could probably do really well. Um, and I started using the the twenty six hundred and fifty two hundred versions as my um, my starting point. Um, right. And then about a week in, I found there was a, a Coleco version which I disregarded because it didn't look very good. Um, Oh, I didn't even know there was a Coleco version of it. I think oh. they also ported that version to the MSX as well. Oh, okay, yeah, they, mm. their architecture. Yeah. Um, but then I found the C64 version, and I, I was blown away by how good that was. A, a modern uh, port um, done a couple of years back. Um, and that reset the bar, and then I scrapped what I'd done and started again. Excellent. So let's take a look at the instruction screens quickly. Um, so it has built-in instructions, so you don't even need to ship a, a, a manual with this, right? You can forego that, just like modern games. <laughs> Hooligan Harry and his gang of crooks have been broken out of have broken out of jail and are looting Southwick's Emporium. Emporium. Bags of gold and suitcases of cash are said to be missing. Officer Keystone Kelly is on the scene, hot on the tail of the fleeting felons. Use a controller to guide the Officer Kelly around Southwick's Emporium. Left, right, enter elevator, duck, and leave elevator, jump. We get little examples of how to play nice. the game up above. Very nice. Hooligan Harry's gang of booby traps, Southwick's Emporium. You'll need to avoid beach balls, toy planes, trolleys, and cathedral radios. Is that what they're called? I've you never there you go. heard that term. <laughs> but they, yeah, they've they, got they, the arch. That like makes sense. Yep. Uh, hitting an <laughs> obstacle will cost you nine seconds. Hit a plane and you will lose a life. Okay. Points are scored for catching Hooligan Harry and his gang. For each gang member captured, you will receive a thousand points. You have extra merit bonus for time remaining, uh, etc., etc. Okay. Next, you can also score points for picking up money bags and cases dropped by Harry and his accomplices. For each bag or case, you will receive various points. Okay. Uh, credits and acknowledgments. Keystone Caver 7800 Edition is based on the Atari 5200 game by Gary Kitchen, with graphics inspired by the C64 version by Antonio Savona and STE86. 7800 conversion, code graphics, sound effects, Lewis Hill, Pokey Ragtime Specialist, nice. <laughs> Bobby Clark. And music support uh, uh, is Matt Smith. Additional artwork, Bethany Hill. A Muddy, muddy Vision reproduction. Excellent. Excellent. So... On the title screen, um, on this version anyway, you can select the level. We'll start with level one. Mm -hmm. But you can also select a different music mode. Mm. Um, so where did these the choices come? I know Synth Papalooza did the music. So where did the choices come for these two different well, music modes? Both of the tunes that, that Bobby put together were, were absolutely fantastic. And having thought about it and taken the consultation of... Um, 
my wife and my eldest daughter because they happen to be around. <laughs> yeah. um, we talked about, um, I didn't want to limit the gameplay to one tune and the title to another. Um, and I got the impression yes. that some people might like one and not the other while they're playing. And it was just a, an yeah. easy option to pop in there just to be able to switch them around a little bit so you can you can alternate. You, you can't have both at the, both on the, you know, one on the title and the same tune in game. You have to alternate, it's either right. or. Right, and and they are uh, Maple Rag and the Entertainer, so yep. no copyright problem. Nope, there. none at all. <laughs> They're very, no. very old songs. <laughs> yes. Okay, so let's jump into it. All right. Um, so we'll start with this song. <laughs> so everybody knows Keystone Capers, and we actually recently played it. I had to keep my mouth shut on the show because we played it on Halloween. Mm. Um, a, an excellent hack of it, which was based on Halloween and you're trying to capture uh, Michael Myers yes. who's running away from you. It was a very fun hack. Mm. Oh, you actually landed on the stair. Awesome. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so when you told me that you're porting the game to the 7800, you said that you started with the 2600 and Atari 8-bit version and then you found the C64 version and then pretty much you said re you restarted doing mm. the game again. Um, so what parts did you bring over from each of the games in terms of playability and music and graphics? I know the music is yeah. totally different from the 800 and the C64 because they both have two different versions of music. They, they do, yeah. I, I think the, the 2600 version um, pretty much has a common layout. I think all, all three of the key versions have a common layout. The, yeah. the, 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 the main sound effects in this version um, are very much 2600 tier edition type sound effects. Um, yeah. Most of the gameplay traits follow all the versions. Where the, where the 5200 and the A8 and the 64 kind of diverge a little bit is when you get onto the onto the higher levels where the obstacles um, they increase in frequency, increase in speed as you would expect. But on the A8 and 64, they also reverse, so you get objects coming the same direction right. as you're travelling which completely flips the gameplay dynamic. You're not having things oncoming anymore. Um, yeah, just like where Tanya ran into the ball that was going the opposite way. You can't mm -hmm. go too fast sometimes. Mm -hmm. You have to slow down. So it adds quite a bit to it. There is no rhyme or reason to... I mean, it, neither version was the same in how they implemented that piece of logic. So it was a case of, well, I have to see what both versions are doing and then find my own middle ground that works well for, for this version. Yeah. And that's, and that's the case with a lot of ports, um, especially arcade ports. You don't, mm. you don't necessarily do a one-to-one -one translation because there are, there's usually limitations of a system or yeah. there's things you have to work around. And there's also, you know, you want to give it your own flair as well and things you like about the game or maybe you didn't like about one certain version of the game as well. Yeah. And, and that's why I've been very specific. I've called it an adaptation because it takes... The essence of the 2600, it takes chunks of the 5200, but also some of the C64 as well. All the best bits, right? <laughs> hope so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in terms of the like the, the graphics, um, was there a one-to-one -one translation from any of the different systems in terms of... Uh, pixel for pixel, or did you have to change some aspect ratios? Or... It, it's very close to the C64 version. Um, the the C64 version, as with most of the C64 sprites, they're in like a double wide mode, so they're very close to 7800 in terms of aspects anyway. Um, but you you effectively have to um, trim it two for one. So the the 64 version is 320 horizontal resolution. The 7800 is 160. Um, so most things have to be okay. effectively halved in horizontal resolution. Um, yeah. There are some things um, I had to make some design changes, things like the ball, the colours of the ball. Um, palette limitations drive some of that. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Um, Cafe Man says, just got here, is this new? What console is this on? <laughs> it's on the 7800, <laughs> and it is, it's brand new minutes old um in terms of reveal anyway um uh i know the speed of the elevator oh here's the uh 
Little skid in between. Ah, Good work, Officer Kelly. Points. That's five more crooks back in the clink. You earned a promotion. Your merit timer now awards 150 points per remaining unit. That is an amazing vehicle. Mm -hmm. Is I haven't played any of the other versions except 2600. Does this come from a different version, or is this no. your uh, creation? This is a, a 7800 exclusive, shall we say. It's mm. beautiful. I love the, the bouncing car against the, the yeah. background there. That is amazing. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it is gorgeous. <laughs> so back back to the question about the elevators. I know the elevators in the 2600 version, you can't jump over them. Um, or it's very hard anyway. You have to duck? Yeah. Um, the 2600 version, the elevator is quite fast. It moves through the levels very yeah. fast. And I think on one of the versions, the elevator moves faster when you get on it. Yeah. And it moves slowly, slowly when you're not on it. So what implementation of the elevator did you so put in this? The, the C64, sorry, the, um, the 2600 elevators um, are really quick. Um, and I felt they were too quick. I think you could use them to effectively bypass the left-hand side of the level um, because they were so fast <laughs> up and down. And yeah. that's not what I wanted. I wanted the game to be a fun challenge and the player to experience the whole, the idea of the game. I think the, seven, the, the, the 5200 version, the elevators, um, they did have a timing mix. So when you're not in the elevator, they're slower. If you get in, yep. they speed up. Um, mm. But there were differences between that version and the, and the 64. So that was probably the one element that took a lot of time to tune. And I started off scientifically measuring the number of frames that elevators were taking. <laughs> and then it got to the point where oh I'm just going to go with what feels right. <laughs> Probably easier, yeah. yeah, that's for sure. Because I know in the 2600 version, you can time the elevators for when you start the From game. From reset, the yes. Elevators are con the elevators are continuously running in the background, no matter when you press reset. They're just always running. Yeah. So if you time it up correctly, you can catch the elevator for a good number of levels before it gets out of sync with you. You, you could theoretically do that in this version. Theoretically. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it would probably take some figuring out. It's probably a couple of weeks with a stopwatch, maybe. But you, you maybe could. <laughs> so maybe not worth it. But yeah. Oh, and um, the little arrow showing the direction mm. of the elevator is that in any of the other versions? I, or is that I, yours? I believe the C64 version has that, but the C64 version also has some little lights along the side oh. um, where the hands that's are. That's super handy. When, when you're trying to catch the elevators, like, oh, is it going up or down? Oh, it's going the opposite way. That's Well, you either have to keep an eye on the map. the escalator. <gasps> Are you able to get past the escalator? I jumped past yeah, it. Yeah, that's... The, uh, Tanya's found the one pixel sweet spot where you can jump through the escalator. Yeah! <laughs> that I haven't, that I haven't fixed. Pixel perfect! <laughs> oh, wow. Good job. That's, that's Bravo, amazing. Tanya. I, Bravo. I'm here to find bugs. That's why That's why he lets me play games. Live bug, live bug testing. <laughs> exactly. there, there are still one or two things that need to be polished up and cleared out. I mean, that's one of them. Um, yeah. The screen that Tanya was just on with the bags and the cases, one of the yeah. further left screens should have a bag in the case. It's not there yet. It's just not in the um, the coding for the level. Um, oh, okay. Uh, but it, yep. it's, it's minor things which I need to just polish up and add in. And I... Uh, oh, it's going down. Oh, no! Get off, get off, get off. Oh, <laughs> Um, and one one other thing, I don't know if it's uh, hard to program or you just haven't done it yet, because I've forgotten to suggest it to you, is the escalators that sometimes you're in midair, kind of floating above a stair. Um, is that something mm -hmm. that um, is still on a, the to-do no. list, I'm guessing? It, it, it is, yeah. I mean, that'll be, um, once the game is pretty much complete, then I'll go into like um, final Goodness. polishing to get the cool pieces of right. stuff that's just not quite right. I tend to be quite a stickler for detail um, and things that's like that thing. just bug me. <laughs> so yeah, that would absolutely happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the tools and emulators and hardware that you use to develop 7800 games? Yeah. Um, when I started off developing for the 7800, I, I really just used... Um, Matt's excellent Atari Dev Studio and an A7800, and that was it really, and, and 78 Basic by Mike Sarna. Um, that's the, the the foundation, the staple of everything that I've done over the last year or two. Um, in terms of tools, programming is all done on, on PC. Um, 
before I had an actual console, I used to do it purely in emulator for testing, um, mm. which has its limitations. Not all the emulators um, have all features. Um, some emulators are good at doing pokey reproduction, some are not. Mm. Um, so it was a case of, um, you know, work with that. Um, I did get a pre-production concerto cart as well um, from um, uh, from Fred, which was which was great. Um, I've also got a Dragonfly now, which I find I find a lot easier to use um, purely because with the Dragonfly you can run a USB cable from the Dragonfly to your PC, and I can just shoot um, a build right. straight to the console. It takes 20 seconds. Um, all of my actual hardware testing was on a PAL box previously, um, but I've recently got um, an NTSC machine that um, uh, Marauder and Juan Solo from the forums of um, UAV modded for me, um, and they did a complete refurb, new caps, new buttons, um, and that now linked with a, an RGB transcoder means I can actually test in an NTSC and PAL, which is really good. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. Hmm? My earpiece is Tanya's kind of racking up quite the score there. That's fine. Um, yeah, 31, you've almost earned your patch. Um, which uh, which <laughs> brings me to patches. I know you have patches, uh, mm -hmm. patch scores for Daredevil and Tire Tracks. Um, are you going to keep with the 35,000 point patch and offer patches for this game? Or I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we're going to do in terms of publishing for this year, whether, we, whether it's going to be released through Atari Age. I'm... I'm discussing with Al what, what the strategy might be because it's a uh, uh, you know I want to be very respectful of the, um, the you know the original game and, and yeah. what you know the work that, that Gary did for the original was, was fantastic um, so we, we, yeah. we're going to think about that very carefully before we decide what we're going to do I would love to do a patch but I think we would probably have to revise the scoring thresholds because the game itself has a slightly different scoring regime to the A8 version and, and the 2600 version. Right, yeah, yeah. And I don't think um, an Activision port has ever been released through Atari Age, so that's something to consider too, right? Mm. Um, how that's going to work. Um, so what, what are some of the challenges that you had making this game as opposed to some of the other <laughs> 7800 games that you've been working on. Was this more challenging in a certain way than other ones? Um, it, it, in some respects, yes. In some respects, it was some, some bits of it was straightforward. Um, I, I had a bit of a cheat mode because the engine, the core engine that I started with, believe it or not, is actually the engine for me, XO. Um, <laughs> So I, I, very different game. <laughs> very very different game. <laughs> We've sure. gone from spaceships and lava to tie airplanes and cathedral radios. Um, but um, I could repurpose the core <laughs> of that code, which saved me a lot of time um, and a lot of um, um, effort to get something basic moving and working. The biggest challenge was um, having so many different um, items that could be present or moving that are not background static and making sure I've got enough DMA time, enough plot time to get all of those elements moving. I mean, theoretically, you could end up in a situation where you've got a robber, the cop, and 12 radios on screen. <laughs> a 12? Oh, wow. wow. Three on each all wall. All four levels. Yeah. yeah, three times four. If you look wow. at the, the cash bag screen, that one there, you could have three on the top. Yeah. If you go back to the right, Tanya, Yep. Anytime you pick up a cash bag and you revisit the screen, it's replaced with radios. Oh, so it will go to four if she gets that. Oh, oh good job. Right good job. <laughs> yes, you can jump over the carts. So when you when you get oh, the nice. cash bag. Oh, nice. Nice jump. Oh, oh, no. Tanya's showing off oh, the mad we skills now. Saw, <laughs> yeah, we almost saw 12 radios. <laughs> oh, on one screen, yeah. yeah. And that's an extra piece so of artwork that we added too, as, well, as, yeah. as, as well, right? My, my daughter nice. actually yeah. designed that. She does bits of graphic art um, uh, as a bit of a side thing. Um, oh, and, and she got really interested in, in the project. And I, I said, well, knock me up some, some graphics and I'll use them. Um, there's a few yeah. others as well. So if we ever do a manual um, or something, they'll, they'll feature quite prominently. But there's some really good art nice. she's done for it. Mm. Oh, that's great. And... Um... Let's see. Oh, uh, Nostalgic said he noticed when the cr 
crook is on a level with the obstacles, the obstacles are still appearing. On the 2600 version, they couldn't share space because they would have to introduce Flickr. Uh, were they able to share space in other versions? Like, um, I, I, I or think, is this a new thing? No, I think I think the the A8 and the 64 versions they they can they can reside on the same floor of the same screen, the same zone. But I think the 2600 right. version that was a hardware architecture limitation, and I don't think that was possible. Yeah, because Activision was very Flickr averse, let's say. Um, so Absolutely. they would eliminate if if you and the robber were on this. Actually, I think just the the robber on the same level as anything would just clear it out automatically. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. Let's see if any other questions. I don't recall in other versions, but are you able to use the escalators to get back down? Nope. Or do you have to use the elevators only? The, the escalators yeah. are actually called out in the manual. Um, they make a big funny feature of it as a design flaw in the escalators that they only go one way. Um, <laughs> That's right. They're, they're, they're sending you to the top floor where all the things they want to sell are. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, you can get out. It's like Ikea. It's very difficult. It's retail Once strategy. Once you're on yeah. that path, you, yes. have, you have no idea how to get out. That's you right. have to keep following it. And you go follow the path until Every the level. Yeah, yeah, 20 minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for those of us who are not as familiar with uh, 7800 and how it... Uh, uses graphics can you explain a little bit about the graphics modes on the system and which one you use for keystone capers yeah so the, the, the game runs um pretty much exclusively in 160 um a which is um your lower resolution but higher number of colors available you've typically got seven and um, eight palettes of four three colors with a transparency color um that yeah. allows you to get the, the really wide variety of rich colors the high score table um, uses the um, 7800 basic high score functionality, which runs in um, 320A, so it's a higher resolution, so you get you lose some of the um, the, the color definition there. Um, the sprites are all pretty much in 160A, so they're all three color plus transparency, and there's a lot of palette sharing between the tiles and the sprites um, to, to try and maximize the number of elements we could show. Some screens have dynamic palettes, so the screen with the uh, picnic tables, um, that shares the same palette as um, the, the bushes, for example, but the colors change because they're on a different screen, we can change the colors up. Oh, okay. So they share the, chain, the same palette entries in the display list. Um, the cop and the robber, they're actually 160B sprites. Um, so they, have, they have <laughs> She, she hopped past the escalator again. Oh, she did it again. <laughs> yeah, I need to, yeah. I need, yeah. I need to Tanya proof the escalator. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Rope it off. It's like, go, yeah. only go up. No Tanya's allowed. Um, oh. Oh, oh, there you go. You got it anyway. So the, the, the cop and the crook, <laughs> they're 160B sprites. They have, um, well, it's, only four, it's only an extra color. They have four colors instead of three. But it was a choice of um, reduce the colors so they didn't look as good or I would have to overlay sprites, which is more draw time. And I, I took the route of, well, the lesser of two evils was having a 160B sprite. It's more storage space, but as it's a one to 8K cart, I could afford that. Mm. It was which, which trade-off um, caused me the least problems. Yeah. So I, I know that sprites work very differently than on the 2600. You can only have, there's, there's only two 8-bit sprites and three one-bit sprites on the 2600 mm. plus a play field um and I've, I've read so many things about sprites on the 7800 it's like you can have unlimited but only if you have time so how does it how does it work on the 7800 for sprites so um the whole thing with the unlimited sprites is um it, it, it's true but it's not um you, you're you're limited by a hard limit of how much dma time you've got how much time uh, Maria has to draw stuff on the screen um, okay. and you can push out the point at which that becomes a problem by allocating some extra RAM um, the 7800 has 4 kilobytes of RAM you can give a little bit of that up as an extra display list or you can use on-car RAM um, this scheme for this game is 128k plus 16k on cars um, okay. so theoretically um, it's using a bit of that 16k of RAM to play the Poke tunes out of and also extend the display list. So you can we can we can show a few more things before we hit that wall. Okay. Um 
Let's see. Oh. Okay, there, there are also one or two little logic elements that need to be added as well. At the moment, the crook, if you get on the same floor as him, he'll go in the opposite direction, he'll run away from you. If you get on right. the same floor and the same screen at the same time, he doesn't notice you. Which is a, which is a, which is <laughs> a bit of a flaw in his criminal logic. <laughs> he just keeps on doing the things he does. Yeah. Oh, he jumped right into I the know, plane. I know. That's not going to be good for your head. So that's um... so the ending screen is quite applicable. Yeah. <laughs> when you're sitting on the ground. Uh. Uh, let's see. If there's any quest, if anybody has questions for Lewis about anything, um, the wheels in the cart look great. Yeah, they're really good at spinning. I, it's just a, a black and white flashing back and forth, but it's very, very effective. It, it, it is literally two frames. Um, I, I, I wanted to put an extra frame in, but it, I just, there's no budget for it. <laughs> yeah, it costs too much. <laughs> um, yeah, as for mirrors, the intermission and game over screens are great. And and you've added uh, a high score table as well yep. that uh, works on the uh, um, Atari Vox or yeah. safe key. If you have Atari Vox safe key or even, um, I, I know there is rent, rare as hen's teeth, a, a high score cart, it, it will support yeah. that too. Yeah, I always hear people talking about the high score card and I'm like, what, what is, where is this thing? <laughs> and it's like, how many people actually have it? And uh, I, I guess it's still worth putting in support for that. I guess it's not too terribly hard. No, I mean, it, it's pretty much the same as the, um, it's handled the same way as the, the save key and the AVR under um, the development environment. So it's, it's, it's no hardship. Oh, okay. And that's why people still, still put it in. That makes sense. Uh, Esther Mary says, would love to see the additional artwork as part of the complete inbox. Mm -hmm. um, Crossbow says, lower resolution. You had me fooled. <laughs> yeah. It's too kind. Um. <laughs> one, one of the challenging things to, um, to get right with this version was um, the draw order. Because um, the way that the 7800 likes to draw the screen is to the most efficient way, define all of your elements, define the, the display list, save that, and then redraw that each frame and then draw the sprites over the top. There's some elements where, where that becomes a bit of a problem, noticeably the, um, the elevators and the escalators, because on the escalators you're going up and at one point your cop has to pass behind the rail. But oh, I'm yes. drawing the rail first, so it's... So there was, okay. we had to have some, it's that bit just there. Um, and there's a gap in the floor where the escalator goes through the floor. Um, okay, and yeah. we have to use some, some little tricks there to make that look right. Make it look as though you're passing yeah. through the floor rather than on top of it. Right, because the, the cop is always on top of everything except for that point in time. And when you step into the play field on the on the um, the elevator all oh, right oh yeah, yeah yeah that's right yeah um let's see what else people have been saying carl just explained uh, it much better Walmart's... than i did 7800 abstracts did? the interface for accessing both devices Good, better explanation <laughs> there we go <laughs> Uh, Nostalgic says, I really like the background elements, pillars and tables and plants. And that rolling, bouncing ball is nice. So you, um, do you do all your own artwork uh, in all your games? Like EXO has, has amazing graphics. And this has really, really nice detailed graphics on like the bush. It's all dithered. On, on this version, I was quite lucky because I could, I could lean upon a lot of the work that had been done in the C64 version and the A8 version. Um, right. In EXO, um, pretty much all of that is, has been done by, by myself. Um, I do get the odd bits and pieces that I've had other people have contributed or have helped with. Um, yeah. But the vast majority I've, I've done myself. Oh, that's excellent. Um, let's see what else. So... Um, You've been doing a lot of 7800 development. 
Um, so have you completely abandoned the 2600, <laughs> the poor old 2600, or or do you still have some, or have you fallen in love with the 7800? Or is there still some room for um, 2600 games? I, I really, really, really love the 2600. Don't get me wrong. It's um, I, I love the platform. Yeah. I, I like developing for it. Um, and I think there will be um, times where I, I will go back. And I, I, the best way I could phrase it is I, I, I think I have a little bit of unfinished business there. There's a couple of projects I want to go back to and see out and, and take a look at. When I started working with the 7800, um, the, the thing that I really got into with that straight away was coming from Batari Basic on the 2600 to 7800 Basic on the... Seven, the transition was really easy and I suddenly had um, access to this abundance of riches of colours and thousands of sprites and pokey sound <laughs> and... Yeah. It was like, yeah. I was like a kid in a candy store. It's like, oh my God, look at all this <laughs> stuff I can do. Oh yeah, I bet. And, and Yeah, I, and, and you put it to good use, like just like looking at this and EXO um, and all the other games that you have in the works, it's it's astounding. And um, and the development on this, <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep it. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> run off the screen. <laughs> she, she did it again. Um, I don't know how. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing seeing what people are able to do now with the 7800. And, mm. and I think a lot of the developers have opened up possibilities or shown possibilities what the 7800 can do now. Yeah. So I can I can see why you've fallen in love with it. I think it's a, it's a hugely, hugely underrated platform that's um, incredibly powerful in, in context. I mean, it, it's... When, when you when you look at the sprite and tile capabilities, it, it's a it's a sprite beast. It really is, and in some ways, I mean, I may be biased. In some ways, I think in, in some of those aspects, it's better than the uh, the NES. Um, right. I mean, sure, there's some fantastic games on the NES, but the the 7800 is also incredibly powerful and versatile. And, yes. and I'm glad and, some and, of the developers uh, have really and taken Esmeralda's that. adds that now we have the Dragonfly as well, which yeah. is. Which just destroys so many other consoles in terms of capabilities, because it's got multiple, effectively multiple sound chips in it. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, with, with the Dragonfly, you've got Pokey at the gate if you've got the Pokey module installed, or, or Pokey Max, or a real Pokey chip, and you've got the YM chip in there as well, which is something I, I'd, I'd like to look at exploring possibilities of that in the future. Um, I need to up yeah. uh, Bobby's bribes, I think. <laughs> I think so. More, more, more uh, beer send, yeah. send his way. I, I do want to yeah. me mention that the, um, the the work that Bobby does, um, he really, really makes the pokey chip sing. Oh. And I know there's a lot oh of there's God, always yeah. the context of pokey versus Sid, and I think they're both amazing devices. But Bobby's work on the yeah. um, on the pokey is amazing. The, the tunes he put together for EXO, I mean, he put like 13, 14 original tunes together. They're amazing. Oh yeah, and there's also a ton of his work all over the Atari Age forums as well. If if you check out, he's posted so many, so many. Yeah. You, know, you can't get by, by the two planes. You have to duck on the second. No, plane. I know, I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you haven't listened to Synth Papalooza's, uh, that's his Atari Age name, uh, music that he's posted, it's it's unbelievable. Um, let's see. So, Nostalgic says it's the homebrew library for 7800 now larger than the commercial library. Uh, Probably on the way. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, if it's not already surpassed, it it will be this year for sure because I, I keep the list of all the games that are released for 7800, 2600, and 8-bit. And just this year, I think there's like, at least in the work in progress plus mm. completed, there's at least like 30, 40. And then you count like um, Pac-Man Plus's Bob's all, all of his back catalog. I, how many were put out? Is it forty-nine? I, I lost track of how many Bob's put out. I mean, Bob's an absolutely oh, I'm, he's, I he's mean, an absolute um, legend in terms of what, what, what his games are. They're fantastic. Oh yeah, the, the original um, seventy-eight hundred library. How how big is that? Do you know if it's was it 49 or 49 or 59 something like that it wasn't huge yeah 49 or 59 i think it surpassed it for sure especially this year because i saw it ramping up year over year the number of titles that were being released for the 7800 and uh i think we 
we've hit the golden age now mm. of <laughs> 7800 homebrew development for sure and, and i think to be honest james i think some of that's been driven by um not only having fantastic development tools available like 7800 basic from, from what mike sana oh, put yeah. together and atari dev studio which, which matt um you know kindly brought to the community as well having those types of tools um but also the ability to develop onto real hardware real quick with the concerto with dragonfly um th yes. those are game th those three or four things there those are game changers yeah and i that's what i thought when concerto was announced and the dragonfly i knew that i just knew that the development process would would speed up rapidly because yeah. you can test it on real hardware play it on real hardware like the emulators are great but uh you know to finish it off you don't have to finagle it yeah onto, you, you can rapidly uh, prototype and, and it's like i said earlier some of the emulators get something spot on a 7800 is very very good um yeah but there are others which are less good like the old pro system emulator it does a lot of things really badly compared to what a modern emulator does and when i first started building things like exo and danger zone i was i was very reliant on um testers to provide feedback because i didn't have real right. hardware it works in an emulator that doesn't mean it's going to work on real hardware and many times they found issues where stuff was um not behaving as it should right and it's astounding to hear that you didn't have a 7800 while developing developing for it, yeah. you kind of think it's and a prerequisite you think so but i've heard that time and time again it's like can somebody test this out and i'm like what <laughs> With the, this amazing developer doesn't have you know a 2600 or a 7800 it's like I, you can obviously it shows you can develop without having the actual system i, I, I think vlad's in a, a vhc in a similar boat i don't think he has a, a physical yes. console and his his library of work is amazing <laughs> unbelievable yeah the speed in the library that he's put out is is huge um, i think he's actually yeah, um, i don't think he's real i think he's a, a series of clones because he makes so many games so quickly and they're all so good yeah or some sort of ai learning tool yeah. that's run amok <laughs> and, and is just somehow latched onto making games <laughs> but we we thank the the ai bot that is vhzc we do <laughs> uh people are saying 59 games oh uh 56 so uh, around there i yeah for sure the homebrew has surpassed it s ramirez says he's a bot so s ramirez has confirmed that uh he's an ai bot yeah. <laughs> Kaffee, I'm, I'm just catching bits of the chat in the corner kathy man's asking how much time have i invested in this um oh good question i i think i had the first kind of stress test rom probably i think in fact i can tell you i've got it on the screen here it was around the 22nd of september so this is about mm. four and a bit weeks i guess maybe five weeks um in terms yeah. of hours i, I that would be a much harder question to answer i'd have to think about that <laughs> um yeah you didn't have a timer going no <laughs> i mean if, if for stuff like exo i'd hate to think how many hours that project i mean that project's 18 months old I, i'd hate to think how many actual hours but this oh, this yeah, one that's a big project this is about five weeks from when i got running first bits of code to what you see now yeah and, and probably a lot faster because each screen is very similar and mm. you're 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 introducing just more and more obstacles um to the screen ten is doing very well no Almost not 50, these 000. double these double balls are killing me though. oh <laughs> you're distracting cards. me too Sorry. <laughs> Yep, blame me. That works. Oh, you did it! Oh, you should have run off the screen. <laughs> no, you don't want to die. Time, You're going to lose a man. June, uh, very, very well. Um, Atari2600 dude says, I'm assuming this is PAL. Nope, no, this is the NTSC. There isn't any PAL code at the moment for this. It's purely NTSC. Um, yeah. And that's part of the reason for that is the speed at which this has come along. I mean, I don't <gasps> normally develop games this quickly. I'm, I've gone into full VHZC mode on this one. <laughs> that's right full speed um but the, i mean i think you know we will do a pal version eventually but with the pal version it's not just a case of changing the colors to make them compatible with the pal palettes the timings are different um a lot of the screen elements run on specific timers so you have to adjust the timer because pal runs at a 
um, a, a lower clock speed. It's um, 50 frames instead of 60. So it's effectively 20 right. less. Right. I, but you being in the UK, that's very strange that you're developing for NTSC first. But I guess that's a bigger audience, is I, I, NTSC? I think it is. Um, I, I think the 7800, and um, oh, people can probably correct if this, if, if this idea is wrong, but I think probably more was sold in the US. It's very popular in Europe and other parts of the world. But the community... Oh, slow down! A lot, a lot of the... Oh, a lot of the community... <laughs> Oh, we got a bit of slow down there. Yeah, so it's it, that's that's only nine we out of both... twelve. I think it's because she got the robber on as well. <laughs> I think oh, I, yeah. yeah, the robber was on a lower screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. But I think m Sorry. most of the community that are, that are testing and running the ROMs that, that I'm aware of, I think the NTSC contingent probably edges it in terms of size. Yeah, I I think so. And a lot of developers I see do NTSC first and then PAL after or is there something built into the 7800 basic that helps you along with the conversion to PAL, or is it a lot of manual uh, changes? Sorry, James, I lost you there. Yeah, low system resources may affect your audio quality. Uh-oh. Too much stuff open. Are you? Can you hear me now? Yep, you're back. All good. Okay, good. Um, what did I ask? <laughs> Don't know. Um... Oh, yes. D does 7800 Basic have things built into it that help the conversion from NTSC to PAL, or is a lot of manual uh, tweaks? Um, I think there's a bit of both. I mean, 78 Basic will pick up um, a PAL unit if it's running on a PAL unit. You can set it dynamically into your code to detect, are you on a PAL, are you on an NTSC? And then you can tell it to go off and set things accordingly, depending on that flag. Um, so that's super helpful. We don't have to do hitting the hardware to test for things and to check for things. Um, it's just a case of you can set a flag, test the flag, and away you go. Yeah. Uh, Nostalgic says, unfortunately, you don't get sprite multiplexing on the 7800 that you do on the 2600. No triple radios for free. That is yep. true. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little flag to set for triplicates. You want oh, three radios, fine. you have to draw three it. radios. <laughs> That's right. Individually. And space them out properly um crossbow says you you said the pokey is using uh extra ram on the cart maybe the slow slowdown has to do with the issue with the video ram then um the video ram that's being accessed on carts um is pretty much the maximum that the system would be able to draw to um if we took the pokey out and gave it all the ram we'd still hit the brick wall of maria only has so many cycles available um, mm. Disabling the pokey plane from RAM and testing for the slowdown, that's an interesting idea. Um, I, that hadn't occurred. Certainly one to try. But I'm pretty certain what I saw there was the fact that we got two 160B sprites and a whole bunch of radios, mm. and they were all on the same screen at the same time. Yeah, I think that was the cause there. I, I, um, I think so, Crossbow. Yeah, I think it was. Um, I think it was a cycle issue. I think we just ran. We just hit the wall. Mm. Uh, Fatoko asks, is this using Batari Basic? And, uh, well, it's 7800 Basic, correct? Yeah. That is called, yeah. And do you, is there anybody who programs in assembly for 7800 that you know of? Well, I think, um, I, I think, I think Bob does for sure. Um, Pac-Man Plus, right. I think, uh, um, I, I might be wrong, but I think all of his stuff is, um, uh, is all assembly. Um, okay. But... Obviously, um, seventy eight hundred basic is very, very powerful. Mm. Oh, hugely! Um, it's like just, just take a look at like EXO, or uh, any of the other advanced stuff. Disregarding uh, Bob's uh, games, uh, there's some really amazing uh, stuff being made out there with seventy eight hundred basic. So it's more than ample <laughs> to, to yeah. do what you want. Um, okay, so I think Tanya's <laughs> beaten the game now as far as wow. she can. She, you got pretty need, good on the bouncing double balls. The, Those are no, hard. I, I don't think I passed a single screen with the bouncing double balls. I have trouble with those too. I, those, those are hard. It's, it's all in the timing and, and running across at the right speed and ducking at the right place. And yeah, yeah. those are those are a challenge. So yeah. So uh, 
Oh, go, go ahead if you had something. Yeah, I was just going to say, the, the, the demo only has 10 levels. Um, I think the C64 mm. and A8 version, they cap out at around 16. But the plan would be oh, to add okay. at least 20 levels. Wow. wow. Yep. There's lots so, more torture in store. Room. Yeah, <laughs> more bouncing balls to yeah. duck. Yeah, five bouncing Triplicates balls. Triplicates and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I yeah. think on, on the later levels on some of the other versions, the, the you get the speed up of the trolleys and the planes. There's a speed up right. beyond that speed up, and you also oh, get really? and then you also get double trolleys as well. But I don't think you get double oh, fast trolleys, only double slow trolleys. Yeah, because I don't think mm. you could land and jump fast enough before the next one hits no, you. No, not a chance. That makes sense. <laughs> um, so how are, probably people will be wondering, how are all the other games that you've been working on uh, going, such as uh, EVO and Bernie and the Cubic uh, Conundrum, Track and Field, and all the other demos? Is any one kind of finish, coming to the finish line, or any of the ones that haven't been released as demos coming close to demos? So, um, EXO is probably close to done. That's yeah. probably, I would guess, around about 95% done. It's having a few um, elements just built out for the final World 5. Um, and also there's one cutscene and a few little bits of link code here and there. But that's one that's going to be um, probably final demo out sometime in December. Um, and that's at the point at which we'll call that one pretty much code complete. Um, so that'll be good to get that finished because that's hogging a lot of my time. And I'd like to move on to other projects. Um, <laughs> yeah. Bernie and the Cubic Conundrum, again, in terms of um, where the demo, where that's at in the code, it's probably a little bit behind where you see Keystone Capers at in terms of its completeness it's it's a little bit rougher than this um but my plan is once this is done once the xo is done um cubic conundrum will be next okay well so I, I would anticipate yeah, that, that one good. being early next year excellent that, that looks like a lot of fun popping around on cubes mm -hmm. and and like i said in the forums it's it's not a 45 degree angle so it won't drive tanya crazy <laughs> it's it's, it's oh, tan tanya actually. friendly for sure <laughs> Excellent. Tenure friendly. That's excellent. And, and, um, and there are, and there are a few, trust... few other bits and pieces of stuff I'm working on as well. And um, track and field, I think I've restarted that one three times. Um, it's one that I'll, I <laughs> I will go back to it at some point. Um, each time I learn oh, yeah. something new from a new project, and, and you know, working alongside and learning from from Mike and Matt and the rest of the guys, I can then take new things and put them into. That's going to be a project where. I think I'll restart that when I'm ready, which may not be until next year. But I do have another project oh, okay. that's also coming along at quite a pace that I've not talked about yet as well. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so you're not ready to torture people with uh, track and field and their <laughs> joy and destroy their joysticks just yet. Not quite, not quite. <laughs> that's excellent. Um, oh, do you use any assembly routines? Or is it all pure 7800 basic? Um... There are some little bits here and there. Um, in, in this particular game, not much. Um, I think the pokey stuff calls some assembly, but that's stuff that Matt and, and Mike and others put together, and I just use those um, libraries to, to execute the, the, the music that Bobby puts together. Uh, Bernie, for example, um, and Cubic Conundrum, that game uses um, a, a few more under-the-hood techniques to um, throw colours around on the screen and, and, and things like that, because... It, it, it would struggle without having those under the hood bits of assembly running here and there. But this one, not so much. This one is more or less pure 7800 basic, which is then compiled into um, assembly. Cross... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the 7800 does not run uh, 7900 basic uh, natively. No, no. <laughs> um, so, how, Crossbow asks, how far along do you consider this towards being completed? Like you said, there's going to be more levels to add. Um, yeah, I, I think the levels, adding the levels in is not that difficult in terms of workflow because of how the underlying structure right. of the game works and the way it really, it's like the EXO engine 2.0 um, and the level structures are basically written as a code um, but you then pull that in and it, it's executable. So that that's not the big problem there. Um, I think what will 
take a bit more time is these little niggles polishing out Tanya not being able to jump through the escalators anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. Finding out the and cause I of that slowdown. Add in, mm. And as you add in these extra, you know, carts and different speeds and stuff, more things like that will possibly appear. And, yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we need to be sure that there's not any bugs or, you know, collision issues. I mean, this version you have now, um, this, this demo, um, has a more refined set of collision code. But you, you're able to jump um, from a standing position up over trolleys. The previous build, you couldn't. There were some issues with the clipping. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, once all uh, those things are added in, we need to check that they are all working fine. They haven't broken something else inadvertently and so on. Uh, Crossbow asks, on the different levels, any plans to change palette colors or objects, or do you or just interested in strictly keeping it like the original? Like wall colors, I guess. Because this is pretty much the first port I've ever done, um, I, I think I probably want to try and stick to the original. Um, mm. I, I do have quite a library of ideas that could have met this to do a Keystone Capers 2.0. But part of that was me. I, I wanted to respect the original IP. I, I wanted to try and do a port, bring it to the 7800. Um, you know, and the last thing I want to do is upset Gary or any of the original creators of these, you know, fantastic works of art. Uh, I wanted to be yeah. respectful of that. Um, maybe in the future there'll be another version that may add some other elements. I, 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 I don't know. It's certainly possible. Yeah. Um... So, uh, I have one more question. Um, so, lastly, I know people want to know when a demo of Keystone Capers will be available for people to try. So, is there going to be a demo that people will be able to try soon? Yep. I'll be putting that up for download, pretty much this version. That'll be available tomorrow. Well, today. Excellent. Today for me. <laughs> It'll be Saturday <laughs> for everyone else. Tomorrow for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, something to look forward to to play on the weekend. And, and again, if, you know, if folks try it and they find um, new bugs or stuff, you know, feedback's appreciated. Even if it's, I, I thought it was really horrible um, or whatever your feedback might be, <laughs> it, it, it all it all helps. It all helps to tune the game and, and make it the best game yeah. we can make it. Yeah, and it's, it's really nice to play. If you've played Keystone Capers, it feels just mm -hmm. like if you played on the 2600 or any of the... I haven't played the other platforms, but... It's it's just like the 2600. I was able to pick it up and play it exactly the same and, and do very well in it, except for the double bouncing balls, which oh. are very <laughs> challenging. So That's I need to practice that. Yeah. And and this one, you're able to skip ahead. Are the, is the demo you're going to be able to skip ahead uh, to level 10? Yeah. Or are you going to restrict I, I, I think we'll keep that in. I mean, I, I use that really as a, as a, a testing function. Um, yeah. When you put new stuff into a level, I don't want to have to play through five levels to test level six. So... I've got no. I, I think true. leaving that in would be would be pretty fair. I mean, it, it allows people to practice as well because some of the higher levels. I mean, level ten. If you haven't played it before, level ten can be very challenging. And oh yeah, when you get to the full version, they double balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, anything else you want to add before we let you go? No. Um, I would just like to say, you know, thank you very much for the invitation to to come on the show. It's um. It, it's a, it's a real privilege, and uh, I'm glad you uh, and Tanya have had fun. Well, you haven't had fun yet, Jim. You haven't played. Tanya's been hogging the. Uh... He hasn't even been able to play. Tanya's yet. been oh, hogging the fun. controller. <laughs> but um... I, I've done lots of te testing on this game yeah. uh, for a couple of weeks, so I'm good for now. Yeah. But no, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. It's a privilege Appreciate to have it. you thank on. You. Actually, yeah. so it's uh, mutual. Yeah. So um, thank you so much for coming on, Lewis, and uh, it was great talking with you. And uh, looking forward to seeing all of the upcoming amazing games that you have in store for the 7800 and possibly Wonderful. 2600. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, we'll talk with you uh, soon. Bye-bye. Bye, Lewis. -bye. Bye, that was wonderful. Yes. Did you get enough uh, Keystone Capers no, in? No, no, I want more. No, <laughs> not enough. Are you gonna play? Some? No, I'm not. No? Okay. People have had their fill, but um, <laughs> actually, I'll play. No. Are you gonna play? Oh, you want to play? Change the music. Um, oh, so it flips it up. Yes. And I'll go to level ten. Can we take these out now? Or? Oh yes. Oh, oh my ear. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That was. 
So let's go to level 10. Um, oh, I didn't even uh, I didn't put up the cartridge I made. Oh, That's after okay. all of that. I know. That's okay. <laughs> put it up now. There you go. And also, it is couch compliant. Yes. It gets uh, the couch compliant symbol. Yep. Yeah. I put it on there. Um, I have a little cou couch compliant thing. Oh, it is time for mm -hmm. treats. Thank you for uh, waiting. Carl G was sitting there with his finger on that button, going, "It's those tr those cats need treats." Yes. So where um, where are we putting this? To? We can move it now. Yes, move I guess the... we can. Laptop now. Yes, I need the logo for that. Money Funster says. <laughs> Oh, it's in the uh, it's in the forums. There's a whole there's a whole thread about couch compliant, uh, couch compliant logo, and um, I changed it to white. It's originally black. No sound. Oh, I had to mute it. Sorry. Uh, let's see if I can trigger it again. Cats are gonna go nuts though. Oh, that's fine. I haven't fed them yet. Uh, how do I do it? I saw you. I saw you hit that bell. <laughs> Phaser Cat Game says this music is going to be playing in my head for the next month. Did I play that? Did I change the music? Yes. Okay. Good. But it's playing the music that played while I was playing now because you flipped oh. it. Oh. There's one for you. Right. <laughs> oh, sorry, the treat time. We heard it here, but it didn't go out. I forget how to trigger it. Oh, here it is. Let's see. Oops. Zero page homebrew says, help, <laughs> help, help. help. In my head Something's now, wrong with the ZPH stream. You're such a good kitty with that bell. Yes, you are. Well, that's not good. He knows how to get fed. Yes, he does. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Ooh, please. I'm just gonna play it for a tiny bit. Oh, am I in level 10? No. No? No, because it I waited too long. Oh, I see. Oh. I forgot to switch back. <laughs> Four, five. Ding, ding, ding. I'll have five. Five, please. Five. Okay, I'll give you one more because that was very cute. Calm down. Good. Alert, up. alert. <laughs> now you can see Alarm. the screen. I switched Alarm. over so you could see the cat, uh, the cat getting fed. Too much in my head. One more each. One more each. What was that? That was new. New message. Yeah, I had something set up. I couldn't hear what it was. So. Triple radios. Oh, now we're going to see the, uh, the quad, double balls. The quad radios. Double balls. Nope, you're all done. You're all done. <laughs> He's like, no, no, don't take it away. It's not all done. <laughs> That's how I get the treats. Okay, we're going to go back to the screen with the quad radios. Oh, it is slow. Oh, no, I got rid of them. It was slow. Ah. Oh, I hate those double uh. balls for the worst. You have, to, ah. yeah, you have to be a little bit past that. Oh, my God. The level where there's double balls is my limit for the game. Like, I need to mm -hmm. practice them. If mm -hmm. once I get that, I'll be fine. All the rest of the obstacles are totally fine. Were the double balls... Did they start on level 10? Is that where I was, I think so. where I failed? Because <laughs> they, yeah. were, they were getting me. You got, got up to 50,000. 50, yeah. Which is really good. Yeah, yeah. I've actually been learning something watching you and, and us play these games. Oh, is it slow? Oh, it's not no, slow this time. You're done. Oh, <laughs> no, you're on the same level. I was on a different level from him last time. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you'll have to figure something. Them's a lot out. of radios. There. Ah. Oh, you have to be Is a little there, bit. Must be some way to run. I don't know. I saw you do it once. I did it. it. No, and then you I, I got and ran. I got hit by the third the one. The third that came. one you got hit, but not and the second. And I was second. like, oh, I still have to. Yeah, you need to practice those. There. There. You and can. Then, th oh, but then, you can't do that then you have one. to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> They're very slow brutal. to get by. Brutal. They're brutal. Oh, you oh. can't do that, can nope. you? No, no, you cannot. Going up. You do have to duck. No, you cannot. Yep. 
nostalgia. So, um, ah, Crossbow said he has been listening to Duran Duran's latest album. Oh, yeah, I listened to it too. Did you? It's I haven't listened to it. I'll have to listen not to bad. it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Duran Duran, they're a good band. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, all their musicians. modern albums, like, even are have been pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Excellent but singer, excellent musicians. Nostalgic says, I felt old when I saw Duran Duran concert during, during a PBS pledge week. Really? Oh boy. They were on PBS or was it just the concert was showing on PBS? <laughs> <laughs> were they there handing out tote bags? <laughs> Hitting an object costs you nine seconds. Yes, yeah, and nine when seconds is quite a bit. When there's that many balls bouncing, it's a lot of nine seconds goes away. Yep. You gonna, huh? No, I played it. I played it. Oh, you just wanted to get one in? Just wanted to practice the double. Are we going to set it up for uh, then the after, after dark? dark? Yes, okay. we okay. are. So that was a lot of fun. I love doing interviews. Um, oh, ragtime. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, ragtime. <laughs> <laughs> and our uh, headset worked really well. Mm. I don't think they'd work for like... A four-hour broadcast. No, because I was, uh, they they. That was an hour. Usually. A little bit over an hour. Usually they 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 say they last for three hours, but they don't usually last that long. So. No. Yeah. But, but that uh, worked really that's well. Good. That's good. Yeah. So, we know we can use that. Yes. Going forward. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I usually don't answer questions about rights and copyright and stuff because there's a lot of gray area mm -hmm. with ports so it's always uh a little challenging to even answer those correctly like yeah. unless you have absolutely all the rights secured then it's like mm, it's gray area mm. so, so maybe i can just say that from now on. <laughs> yeah when people ask that because people do yeah. ask that um from time to time when we have uh interviews mm. about ports yeah um so we are going to do some after dark with crazy balloon right here um that's gonna be a lot of fun it's a fun game mm. port of a port of an arcade game mm -hmm. so uh, let me show what's coming up on the show We just did the interview. We're going to do the crazy mm -hmm. balloon. And, um, yeah, Gary wouldn't have the rights. It would be Activision. Yes. It would be the uh, modern Activision uh, that has the rights. I mean, it, it, they, rights can be sold, they so it depends be. who has They could them. have sold all the 2,600 rights mm -hmm. to somebody else, a holding company. No and idea. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> we need a shrug sticker to place on the port, yeah. Mm. <laughs> um on uh on tuesday's show next tuesday we're gonna play cone ball and probably catch up with a bunch of other games that have been out for a while that have been pro that have progressed that have progressed and, and, and been further developed kind of yeah thing. that have been That's developed cool. further enough that it's like oh we can revisit them and yeah. it'll be good Dan ABC is now getting a concerto or dragonfly cart after that. <laughs> oh, yes. They're super handy. Yes. They're really, really nice mm -hmm. so that you can play all the new homebrews on the actual hardware. And they are super awesome. Um, then uh, November 12th, I don't really know. We might play Final Assault, maybe some 8-bit games. We'll see what comes up. Mm -hmm. I can always bump them. Uh, and then on November 16th, we're going to have another interview mm -hmm. and some other exclusive world premieres of some Atari 8-bit games. Yes, that's going to be um, fun. I'm talking with three people this time. Yeah. Eric and Robert Anschwitz and John Weisgerber. And uh, then we're doing a little break for a couple weeks in late November so I can catch up with real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, then at the end of the year, Holiday Homebrew Special. There's going to be some other special shows mm -hmm. before that. Holiday I, related or maybe, maybe not. Yeah. of at least one exclusive debut. <laughs> oh, the, the Holiday Homebrew Special. Gonna, yeah. It's uh, going to be confined to that. Oh, I see. Okay. There are definitely not We're not going to have a month of Christmas oh. specials, are we? There's not enough games. <laughs> there is so many Halloween games. Oh, yes, that's true. That's true. Uh, winter and Christmas and all those is much smaller, mm. much much smaller. That's People true. like the horror games. There's a lot of yeah. winter winter themed games though. 
Oh yeah. 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 Win- yeah. But that's what you have to go to. Winter solstice. I'll have to look show. for them. Um, <laughs> winter solstice game. Uh, real world. How horrifying! I would never leave Fantasia. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to leave it either, but I got to do it. There's yeah. paperwork to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that. Mm. Oh, paperwork. All the reason to develop, develop Menorah Madness. Menorah Madness. Get on it, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's uh, Batari Basic. Make it easy. Mm-hmm. No, somebody did make a Menorah game. Yeah, they are, yeah. And we played it. Yeah, we did. It was Menorah Madness. It was, was just. It, it, was, it a, was just a Menorah game. Yeah. It was like spinning, spinning the Menorah, which yeah. we were we were not. Too, a little baffled at. Uh, we had the quite, rules, but we didn't. Still yeah. Like, what's going on? Yeah. 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 Um. Dragonfly is on hold now. Part shortage. Mm. Oh, boo. And I know Concerto is... Dreidel. Sorry, not Menorah. Menorah is the <laughs> candle holder. Oh, right. Dreidel. Yes, Dreidel you're absolutely right. I'm not quite that... Uh, you could spin a Menorah. Uh, I'm not quite that... One. Not up <laughs> that on your... That dense. No, uh, no, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Dreidel is what I was thinking of. But yeah, yeah. Menorah, yeah. different. Yeah. Dreidel Madness. Dreidel <laughs> no. Madness. No. I can't remember what it was called. I, I, it was a Dreidel game, yes. Yeah, it was a Dreidel game. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So that's what. Well, thank you very much, Atari Twenty Six Hundred Dude. Yes. It was great having Muddy Funster. It was on. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And yeah. and and that he could join us so uh, early in the morning in in his time yeah. zone. So I mean, it worked could take out. Some time out. Fairly well in terms of time zones. He had to step a little late. Yeah. One really. is a, more than a little late for for. It was one o'clock and then to two. One to two. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It can be. Yeah. <laughs> lighting the menorah L- you mean lighting the dreidel and spinning oh the menorah God. would be an interesting way <laughs> well, yeah. the, the dreidel has a little stem you yeah. could light yeah that, that's funny <laughs> spinning the menorah yeah put it on one of those rotating things yeah you could spin around with the candles all lit uh crossbow i won't say that i haven't been playing animal crossing <laughs> she may or may not have been playing animal crossing with all the new upgrades uh, yes Yes. There was a little bit of Animal Crossing going on today. So yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, but you just found out today, right? Because it's been uh, the upgrade's been out for a while. Uh, well, it was supposed to be on the fifth, but they actually did it early. So I have I didn't. I didn't oh, do it right away. I didn't okay. do it immediately. I actually, I was homesick today because I had a horrible migraine yesterday. So mm. uh, that was rather convenient. And for... the car broke down. What the hell? Yeah. Oh, double whammy. The car broke down, and then I got a migraine while I was waiting for someone to jump it. And then I had to go pick her up. And then James had to come to get me because I couldn't drive the car home because I couldn't see. So uh, it was day. a wonderful day. Mm-hmm. Wonderful, wonderful day. So, uh, But today's much better. I got to play video games. So. Yeah, all day. Relax <laughs> yeah. your brain. Relax my brain. Sleep in. So, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for tuning Stop in. Uh <laughs> We will be playing some more games in about uh, 10, 15 minutes. Yes, we'll yeah, right okay. Back. And we can talk more Animal Crossing. Yes. <laughs> Free for all Crossbow, Crossbow, get your wife in. <laughs> That's right. It's all Animal Crossing talk. Uh, um, so thanks for tuning in to the special show and interview. Remember, that game is going to be out tomorrow. The mm-hmm. demo for everyone to play. It's super fun. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Crossbow, Nostalgic26. Thank you, Muddy Funster, of course. Lewis for coming on the show d train atari 2600 dude s ramirez carl g dan abc ground trooper nostalgic thank you for all your questions as well vitoko uh, mk smith rod castler atari 800 xl rules i have to say the whole name miss command oh cats are crazy yep uh charles wheeland uh, Elena Whisperangle Ship Whis No, Elena Whisperangle Shipper. There we oh go. Oh my goodness. Uh, who else? Who else? I think I've got all these names. Yep, that's the end of the list for now. Um, so stay tuned. Oh, Metal Learner just snuck in and you missed it. Well, you can always rewind, watch it. Aww. Um, so, uh, we'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Thanks for tuning in and. Thanks for having me on and showing the game. Thanks for all the questions, too. Uh, it was a lot of fun, Muddy Punster says. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Did you have fun playing? I did. Well, I well, love Keystone she Capers. She got really good at Keystone Capers. <laughs> got better as we went on, too. And you definitely earned the 35,000 patch. Is that what the patch is? Yeah, Excellent. it's it's one of the easier Excellent. ones to get a patch for, oh, okay. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they I should have made it like a little higher. 50, probably. Yeah. yeah. Nah, that's okay. But, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes. So mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned. Bye, everyone. Bye. Stay forever!